Hi, I'm Eric Chang, and we're in Miami Beach, Florida, the starting point of the fifth edition of Around the World in 80 Hours. This year's trip will circle the world more vertically than horizontally as we head south to Colombia and Brazil and then to South Africa before heading north to Dubai and then back to Miami. The focus of this year's trip will be income inequality and economic growth. Let's head to the airport and board our first flight. We take off at 10 a.m. on a four-hour flight covering 2,500 miles, crossing two time zones and landing in Bogota, Colombia in the early afternoon. Hello and welcome to Bogota, the capital of Colombia. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Bogota. Uh, we are at an elevation of 8,300 feet, which is a great climate to grow coffee, Colombia's most famous export. Colombia promotes its coffee through its fictional spokesperson, Juan Valdez, whose name can be seen everywhere. It's enough to convince me. Now that we're awake, we'll stroll along Bogota's beautiful streets. It's hard to believe that just a decade ago, Bogota was one of the most dangerous cities in the world. Today, the city is home to colorful neighborhoods and many shopping malls as foreign direct investment has increased. Our short stay in Bogota is up and we head back to the airport to board Avianca Airlines for our flight to Brazil. We take off at 10 p.m. and fly 8 hours and 3,500 miles, crossing one time zone and landing in Sao Paulo at 6 a.m. And welcome to Sao Paulo. This is the largest city in Brazil and one of the most multicultural cities in Brazil, as we'll soon see. We are in the Liberdade neighborhood of Sao Paulo, which is home to the largest population of Japanese outside of Japan. In the Liberdade district, numerous Japanese shops and restaurants fill the streets. Sao Paulo also has an efficient subway network which allows us to make our way to a very unique neighborhood where graffiti is actually welcome. We are in the Beko do Batman district of Sao Paulo, otherwise known as Batman Alley. And this is a place where graffiti artists are welcome to come and show their talents. By using graffiti to create an outdoor museum, this former slum has become a tourist attraction, resulting in greater economic activity in the area and generating jobs for its residents. It's a unique approach to revitalizing the economy. Before heading back to the airport, we stop at the Museo do Futebol to celebrate Brazil's national sport. Entering the museum, we are greeted by Brazil's most famous soccer player, Pele. Welcome to the Futebol Museum. We now head back to the airport to board our overnight flight on South African Airways to Johannesburg. We take off at 6 p.m. and fly 9 hours and 4,500 miles, crossing three time zones. The sun rises across the southern Atlantic Ocean as we approach the African continent, and we land in Johannesburg at 6 a.m. in the morning. Welcome to Johannesburg, South Africa. We are in Nelson Mandela Square. And as you can see, this is a city of beautiful buildings and shopping malls and restaurants. But it's also a city full of contrast with a lot of uh, income inequality, as we will soon see this afternoon. We now begin our tour of Johannesburg, beginning with one of the nation's most important museums. We are standing in front of the Apartheid Museum here in Johannesburg. We're going to learn about this very important part of South Africa's history. The Apartheid Museum provides a powerful reminder of the struggle that many South Africans experienced during the many decades of segregation. It also emphasizes how income inequality remains a big problem in South Africa. After our visit to the museum, our tour guide takes us to downtown Johannesburg. The downtown area used to be home to many corporations and businesses, but today very few remain, as many buildings have become slums, making this area one of the most dangerous places in the world. It's not hard to gain a sense of the extreme level of inequality facing South Africa, particularly in the various townships, the most famous being Soweto, the former home of Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu. We make a visit to Nelson Mandela's home, which is now a popular tourist attraction. Although Soweto is now home to many middle-class neighborhoods, many slums still exist. After leaving Soweto, we take a drive to a nearby lion park, 
where we have an opportunity to see some of Africa's famous natives. Let's visit with nature's finest. Do you guys any idea how big they are? Um, Kilowatts? It's 290 kg now. For an extra fee, one can enter the lion cub den. What I didn't realize was that I had to give up my shirt as well. After surviving my little lion cub attack, we say farewell to South Africa and our fantastic tour guide Elias, who wished us well in his native language. Back at the airport, we board an Emirates flight at 2 p.m. and take off on a nine-hour flight over Africa, crossing a time zone and landing in Dubai at 10 p.m. Because we have a four-hour layover, this gives us just enough time for a brief visit to the city. Although it's 11 o'clock on a Monday night in Dubai, the Dubai Mall, one of the largest in the world, is still bustling with activity. After a quick stay in Dubai, we head back to the airport to board an Emirates A380 plane for a long 15-hour, 7,000-mile flight. This flight flew the polar route over Greenland as it crossed back seven time zones and landing in New York at 7 o'clock in the morning. We clear immigration to New York and then take off again for our final flight back to Miami. Back to our starting point in Miami Beach. We traveled for over 20,000 miles on four continents and we saw economic concepts all around the world and we did it in under 80 hours. Thank you for joining me on this adventure and I'll see you again next year.